along. I struggle to get smooth cinematic shots. One hero will make the difference. You've seen Elf on a Shelf. Now meet No on a Drill. You can focus on flying while he gets the shot. He can shoot in any direction, track any object, and turn your drone invisible. Gnome on a drone. Fly first, shoot later. Now the hardest thing about drone videos is that you gotta do two things at once. You gotta fly the drone while also moving the camera cinematically. It's hard enough that some drones even have a dual operator mode where one person flies a drone and the other person can focus on moving the camera. But even that requires very careful coordination. And what if you don't have any friends? Fortunately, there's a simpler way. Using a drone that can let you focus on flying and aim the camera later. Yes, really. This is a 360 camera drone. So is this, and this, and this, and this. And they have another one at the bottom of the ocean. But that's a story for another day. Now you might be thinking, well, I don't really care about shooting 360 video. And that's okay. Because these 360 drones are not just for 360 videos. What these drones are most useful for is to let you focus on flying instead of trying to get the shot. When you capture a video using a 360 drone, you can reframe the video any way you want. You can show any direction or even multiple directions simultaneously. But that's only half of the story because 360 drones are also invisible. Hey Mac, you know, I can see the drone. It's right in front of you. Of course, you can see the drone, but in the video, the drone is invisible. Wait, how did that happen? See, 360 drones carry a 360 camera, like this. The 360 camera has one lens facing up and another facing down. Each lens can cover around 190 degrees. Put those two together and you have a fully spherical 360 view. But look at this area here. It's not captured by either of the lenses. 360 drones are designed to be thin enough to fit within this area, this tiny blind spot. And when the 360 camera combines the images from the top lens and the bottom lens, the drone disappears. And that's why they're also called invisible drones. Okay, that's cool, but does this work in the real world? I'm gonna let you decide for yourself. See, I'm a licensed drone pilot, and one time I shot a drone video for a dental office. And I offered to do the drone video both with a regular FPV drone and an invisible 360 drone. So let's compare the shots. Down, cause the future 
The future is now, not back in doubt. Cause the future is now. Now, I'm sure there are pilots out there who could have done a better video than the one I showed you with a standard FPV drone. But my point is that even with my meager skills, these are the shots that I could get with a standard FPV drone versus a 360 drone. Now, although 360 drones are really awesome, they do have some disadvantages. The biggest disadvantage in my view is that they have a stitch line. Remember that blind spot that we were talking about a while ago, that stitch line? Well, if anything crosses that stitch line, you're gonna notice a little bit of the stitch line. So when flying a 360 drone, you gotta make sure that that stitch line falls into an area that's not super critical, or at least not very close to the camera. Another disadvantage is that it has a lower bit rate and lower resolution compared to a GoPro. So GoPros can shoot at 4K or even 5K, whereas reframed 360 videos using a 5.6K camera will appear as something like 1080p. Another thing is that the lenses on a 360 drone are totally exposed. If you put anything around them to protect the lenses, those can show up in the video. So flying a 360 drone requires you to be extra careful. Uh, the Pavo 360 has a landing gear that helps solve that problem. I'm gonna talk about that later on. Lastly, these 360 drones are FPV drones. That means they're fully manual and they are not assisted by GPS, unlike DJI drones where you have stabilization from GPS. So they're much harder to fly. Now, if you wanna learn FPV in the easiest and simplest way, then check out my new channel, FPV for Dummies. So just as I showed you a while ago, there are several 360 drones in the market. Which one should you get? Now, here are a couple of them. This one is the Stan FPV Cinebird, and this one is the Beta FPV X Knight 360. They fly reasonably well, in my opinion, but the problem with them is that the 360 video that they capture has a little bit of waviness along the stitch line, kind of like jello, and I'm not really sure how to get rid of it. Now, these are newer ones that do not have jello. This is the Nubi drone in Vizi 360. It's a 360 drone that's designed to fly indoors as a cine whoop. You can see it's much more compact than, let's say, the X Knight 360. It was also revolutionary in having two separate batteries on either side of the drone, which helps with weight distribution. So it's very evenly balanced. The even weight distribution helps it fly really well. Now, the issue with this drone is that it is severely underpowered. When I'm hovering, my throttle is something like 60 plus percent. Now, remember that drone video that I showed you? Well, I also did a video outside and the first time I tried it with this drone, this one didn't have enough power to arrest the descent. So it, I actually crashed and ruined one lens. Now, this is the newest 360 drone. This one is by Beta FPV. It's called the Pavo 360. It has design cues that are inspired by the newbie drone Invisi 360. It improves on the Invisi 360 in several important ways. One of them is power. This has way more power. Number one, it's got larger motors. Two, the motors have higher KV. And three, this is powered by 6S, whereas this one by default is just 4S. So this is way more powerful. Another major improvement is this retractable landing gear. This is the first BNF 360 drone to feature a retractable landing gear. And it's really useful to me. I always leave it down like on practice runs and I only lift it up when I'm doing the actual shot. So it minimizes the risk to the camera. Now the Pavo 360 does have an issue which is banding in low light. In low light, you can see these like waves around the camera. And the good news is that Beta FPV has worked with Insta360 to find a fix for it. Now, if you want to learn details about how it's fixed, it's here. But going forward, Beta FPV says that all their inventory 
will be fixed so that this will no longer be an issue. Now, another disadvantage of the Pavo 360 is that the camera is more expensive. This one is the SMO 360. It's kind of like a modified version of the Insta 361R and it's about $399. Now, the Invisi 360 uses an Insta 361R, but it doesn't use the whole thing. It just uses the 360 mod and the core mod. So uh, this one, if you buy it by itself, this is like, I think $200 and this one is like $100 or so. So if you have, an, uh, if you crash it and scratch it, this will cost you about $300. This one, if you crash it and scratch the lens, well, that's gonna cost you like $400. So which one would I use? Well, if I'm shooting purely indoors, then I would choose the Invisi 360. Why? Because the Insta 361R is shorter. It has a smaller stitch line. So the smooth stitching will be smoother. Um, not only that, but the tuning, in my opinion, is better than the Pavo 360. On the other hand, if the flight is outdoors or both outdoors and indoors, then I would choose the Pavo 360 because it's more powerful. Motors can handle outside conditions much better and can handle things like rapid descents much more than the Invisi 360. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I do my best to answer all questions. Now this week is super excited. We've got really awesome news. Don't miss it. Hit subscribe and I'll see you in 360.